Hello there, so you may be aware that LEGO has come out with quite a few Star Wars giveaway purchases this year. The most expensive, of course, being this Trade Federation Platoon Attack Craft. I think they give it another name like Droid Carrier, which lines up to what LEGO have called their previous sets. And of course, you're probably aware by now that LEGO have done this before, but you may have seen the very first set and, well, I'm not old enough to own that set, but I do have the 2011 set which also came with Jar Jar was on this set, but it also came with Jar Jar and a Gungan. Jar Jar's just jumped for his life, which fair enough. But that is how I was able to get the two droids to build this ship, because of course, I'm not spending £145 for something that I already have, but I will be comparing the two because this is more or less, besides for two great curves, the exact same as the original build. And not only the differences between the two sets, but also how many droids we can actually fit because the old one only housed eight and that could definitely be improved quite easily. But the new one only houses six, which might be a little more in line to their very first set, but Lego could definitely have done a bit better. And before we get into the comparison of the droids, you can see that this playset is definitely longer, but... I do quite like the size of this for how many droids fit on the back. And they are definitely completely different designs to each other. First off, both of these sets come with these droids. But I will say the gift with purchase does have the 1998 copyright on the front of the torso, which is a nice touch. It's like how the droids used to be before they got rid of it. And I think they now just have a slight Lego mark on them. As I said, this would have been picked up with £145. Actually, it's still available here in the UK. I'm not quite sure about elsewhere, but it doesn't seem to be selling out. And I think it is because of that high price. I've already seen people trying to resell it for £30, £40, which isn't too far over what Lego value it at. But of course, the playset from, well, I must have got this for my 10th birthday. So that tells you how old I am comes with Jar Jar and a Gungan Warrior. I'm not sure if this is a named Gungan or if this is just a generic Gungan. I think it might just be a generic Gungan. But of course, you can use this for a few different Gungans we see in Phantom Menace. And I'm sure, like the clones, most of them probably have their own names. But on the backs, both of these droid units do pull out, which is quite nice. I do prefer the mechanism on the newer one because it just slides in there. And as you can see, it's pretty easy just to take out. Whereas the old one, I'm not quite sure why they didn't go with it. I guess it's a bit more solid, but it does clip in there, which means it's much harder to get out one handed because you have to pop the whole thing and try not to break the droids or knock Jar Jar over. You know what? Jar Jar's going to the back so he don't fall over. I know he's clumsy and all, but he's got to be able to stand up, especially with that accessory he is holding, which first off, I don't think the accessories get talked about much and especially this Gungan shield. I might have to try and see how expensive these are and build a whole army of these for a mock later this year because that shield is amazing. And for what, 10, just over 10 years ago, nearly 15 years ago, that is awesome printing from Lego. I mean, I know we've seen them on like Lego Dimension Shields as well. And most recently in the Space CMF, Orion's got a similar printed shield with a star sign on. So we will be taking a look at that in a few days. But I just really, really like that printing. Anyway, here you can see the eight droids with their blasters. And this is more accurate to how they appear in the show than the new one. The new one has them standing up like some sort of Imperial Troop transport. And actually... I need to talk about this. Lego have the droids positioned and they tell you in the instructions, this isn't just the artwork. I know from Mania Bricks picked out a mistake in the artwork where one of the droid pilot minifigures don't actually have their legs on the back of the box. So I'll whack that on screen for you. But this looks like a droid chicken of some sort. I mean, that, that is 100% a chicken. I don't know what they were going with it. I don't know if there's some reference to chicken droids or if there's something I'm missing out at, but I definitely prefer the way the older set does it with the heads caved in. You can actually see with this one standing up that it does look like an Imperial Troop Transport, but the heads do hook into the torsos of this droid just for them to be able to fold over. And there's actually a little gap at the top here and at the bottom for this hand because it sticks out a little wider than two studs. 
so you can have them either way. Standing up sort of bends the arm as you can see. But definitely let me know what you'd prefer to have your droids like down below because I'm sure loads of people would find this chicken droid very, very funny. So that might be a fan favorite in years to come. We've also got the blasters positioned on the side, much, much more efficient than having them on the top. Though I will admit both of them definitely have enough room in this area to have some pit of blasters, maybe even just hollow out that middle bit, have it so the top can be removed and just pull the blasters on, or even just not include them in the set at all. I know that's definitely not Lego's style, but there are six droids on the left. There definitely could be more, but there definitely, definitely could be more on the right. It's so easy to mock out. All you gotta do is take away the blasters and the two by twos, which isn't too hard. And then you can fit up to 16 droids on the back of this carrier. Now, that is getting somewhere. I know it's still not quite the numbers you see in Phantom Menace, but we've only got so much of a playset that we can fill with droids. You can definitely stack them on the side and get a bunch more droids attached. But you can get 16 on the back here, and you could probably even expand this using your own bricks, another four bricks across, I'd say. So if you have any four by 12 plates, this is definitely the time to use them because that's really what gives it the size. I think there's also a two by 14 plate underneath each of these that will be needed. But if you've got them four pieces, you can expand from 16 to 24 droids. There's a bit of quick maths to keep me on my toes. Whereas this is six droids and well, yep, that's, that's about it. You can't really expand it as easily because you're gonna need a few more pieces. Though you definitely could just expand this part and use some bracket work on the bottom. But instead of doing that, I've opted for a more simplistic solution for this. You can see I've got one of the two by two brackets. I've also got a curve piece. If you don't own many of these curve pieces, I get a load of these from the creative boxes. Just use like a one by two slope or two one by one slopes. And then if you angle this down a little bit, I might be able to show you off well enough. You can clip the bracket just to the back of this side and get another tower of droids just on top. Now, we are looking more like the old one and there's definitely some inspiration for the height. I've seen also people use, I think it's like bars and just like one, one by plate along the top to attach the droids and hang them off from. That is also another amazing solution. But for this one in particular, I've just got a few of these brackets and slopes. So you can see what one side looks like. And I haven't actually tried putting these on one handed, but as you can see on camera, it's quite easy to do. And this only adds another six on each side. So 12 pieces to the piece count. Lego could have definitely done something like this just to improve this and take it that much further. The studs on the bottom row of droids are leaning up against the bracket pieces, but they're not in the way or anything. This is a legal technique. And you can see we've only got three blasters now for these six droids. And I have used that black plate at the bottom in white. I don't own it in black. I got it in white from this year's Ninjago poly bag. So if you're looking at pine out the set and that piece is a little expensive, definitely pick up a few of the Ninjago poly bags and that will help you build the set a bit cheaper. But I do have another one with another three blasters you can put next to it. Likewise, you can actually get the one by five black ones with a Technic part in the middle, because if you were to whack this back on the set, let's bring it all forward so you can see. This just slots in here. And again, I think they were green plates that are used to slot in, but I think this is so nice. I think they could have definitely put it in the other way around, but I'm not too fussed on this. You can see there are two studs gaps at the front here and there's also two studs behind them on the left. So you could definitely use a one by five if you're trying to build it yourself. And you can see what I mean about the brown to gray pieces there. And I've actually also just sloped out the front, but I think it gets the idea across, just a little bit of imagination needed. And suddenly we've got 12 droids on the back. Again, you could probably add, you could probably only get another droid here unless you were to hang it off the back a bit more. So you're looking again at 12 to about 16 droids if you were to push it. So I definitely prefer the 24 because if you're modifying this, you might as well just rebuild this if you've got it in your collection. And all you need to do is remove a few plates. But I do quite like this set. 
I'm happy I didn't end up paying £145 and getting this for free. I know this isn't costing me £145, but it just feels like it's a bit too much for this. Speaking of, if you did end up picking up any Lego on May the 4th and qualified for the AAT poly bag and don't know what to do with it, stay tuned, subscribe for tomorrow's short, which will have an awesome, awesome build that I am really enjoying. So you've got that to look forward to and... You know what? I'll whack up another poll. Which one of these do you prefer? Do you prefer the older 2011 one or do you prefer the 2024 one, which is 13 years apart? There's definitely a few nicer patterns on the side. Like I really do prefer these than just the simple slopes and dome pieces they've used over there. So perhaps we could get a mixture of these two in the future and include some more Gungans. I'm surprised we're not expecting any Gungans considering the Battle of Naboo is, well, I would consider it the biggest battle in Phantom Menace. I guess you've also got the N1s, but we don't have any of them. And at the minute, only have a Droidicar, a Scimitar, a Diorama. They've covered all the bases, but I just feel like we've not got as much, especially compared to what we got for Return of the Jedi last year. It might be because it falls on 25 years of Lego as well, but it's going to be the case every year. I would like to see some more Phantom Menace sets later on this year. And oh, we also got the Brookheads. So we do have a few different sets. I just feel like we haven't got many minifigures besides this gift with purchase. I don't think we've seen any other sort of droid battle packs recently. I'd love a droid and Gungan battle pack, but we'll have to see what else comes this year. Thank you so much for watching. Do drop a like if you enjoyed this comparison and fixing and let me know if you will be adding some more droids to either of your sets because i really like the way that looks but that is all for today and may the bricks be with you always